right, so this is Jason Dunn from Apple Thoughts, and this is an experiment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, power up my Mac Mini, and I'm actually going to uh, leave the camera pointed at the screen uh, as it's doing its initial setup, and basically do a bit of a stream of consciousness video uh, where I sort of share some thoughts about what my impressions are, uh, what my reactions are as I'm uh, sort of getting to experience this. I have never set up a Mac before. I've never owned a Mac before. This is a completely new experience for me. And again, this is an experiment. Uh, I will probably edit together maybe some of the more unique moments uh, from this and potentially post this online. But uh, regardless, this is a bit of an experiment. So I have uh, the Mac Mini. Uh, it is hooked up to uh, the uh, DVI uh, adapter. And as you can see, I have a, a DVI cable hooked up. Um, then uh, I have the uh, Magic Mouse uh, right here, which I've also never used before. And we also have the Apple uh, wireless keyboard. And the whole thing is set up uh, in, and connected uh, to a, a Dell 24-inch uh, uh, monitor. So that's basically the display I'm going to be using. And I'm actually sitting here behind the camera. So I'm going to be sort of reaching forward and uh, trying to uh, you know, use the, uh, the mouse and keyboard. And we'll kind of see what this experiment, um, you know, what happens from it, basically. So uh, I did notice that there's a... Uh, an on button on the bottom of the mouse here. So I'm gonna flip that on, it goes green and then there's a little blinking light here. I did notice that when I peeled off the sticker on the bottom, it left some sort of gunk behind. So that's kind of weird. But anyway, it's still a really interesting product. Um, I'm going to uh, press on the side here and uh, turn on the keyboard. So as you can see, there's a little bit of a uh, light there. And then without further ado, I'm going to uh, turn on the Mac Mini once I can find the uh, power button. That's another interesting thing about the Mac Mini. Okay, so I'm turning it on. Uh, I can hear it powering up right now. Just heard the little Mac uh, chime. And then somewhere over here, there we go, we should see uh, the Mac uh, booting up. So uh, it's kind of neat to, to see the, uh, you know, the logo up, up on the screen there uh, initially. And uh, we'll just see what happens here. All right, so um, it's been kind of thinking for a minute here. Uh, looks like, oh, well, that's kind of cool. So uh, there's an icon on the screen and it's actually telling me to, uh, turn, uh, to turn the button on the Magic Mouse um, on. Uh, I've already done that and so it looks like it's maybe going out and it's doing some sort of a, uh, a pairing process uh, with it and that's kind of cool. Okay, there we go. Uh, you, I don't know if you can see this on camera but I'm able to move the cursor and so I can go ahead and just click on the next stage. All right, so that was pretty cool. It's telling me uh, use English, so yeah, that's fine. Definitely one of the most pain-free Bluetooth pairings I've, I've ever seen. That's actually pretty cool. All right. So one of the things I did not realize is that the Mac Mini actually has a built-in speaker. Uh, that's kind of news to me. Um, it's playing a little song. This is kind of the Mac welcome thing. I've seen this on video before, but uh, it's very cool. I mean, this, this gives you a, a very interesting vibe, you know, uh, experiencing the uh, computer for the first time, experiencing uh, Mac OS X. I'm going to try not to call it OS X, as uh, other people have informed me, I should call it Mac OS X. So yeah, and now it's looking at me, um, well that's cool, so now it's actually going ahead and I'll zoom in here. Uh, it's pairing with the, uh, the, the uh, keyboard, the Bluetooth keyboard, and now it's telling me to go ahead and type a code into the keyboard. So this is uh, for security, of course. And then I'm going to hit return, and the pairing is complete. Uh, wow! Again, that's that's really cool. That is uh, that was totally painless. It didn't involve the typical idiocy that uh, Bluetooth can sometimes uh, involve. It's asking me uh, where I'm from, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to say I'm from Canada, which is where I'm from. Uh, what kind of keyboard layout I want? I'm going to tell it that I want a U.S. Uh, style keyboard. Well, actually, I can do Canadian English. Now I'm going to leave it at US just cuz I don't want to I don't want to complicate things at all. Going to click on okay. Uh so it says you already own a Mac. Um 
If you have important information on another Mac, you can transfer to this Mac. You can also transfer information from another volume on this Mac or from a time machine, blah, blah, blah. Um, I, don't, I don't have any sort of a Mac, so I'm just going to say uh, do not transfer my information now. And I'm going to click on uh, continue. Um, I should point out that um, I just put my ear up to the uh, up to the Mac Mini, and uh, boy, this thing is so quiet. It is freakishly quiet. Yeah, uh, I have to put my ear, you know, within about six inches of it just to hear it. So that's beautiful. I love, love, love quiet computers. So that is really, really nice. Um, so uh, I have uh, it's it's offering to find my uh, my wireless network. Uh, and so I see my I see my network here, and so um, we'll just see. Does it does it show? Oh, it doesn't. Okay. Well, that that's nice. So then I can actually go ahead and type in my password here, and no one I will be able to <laughs> figure out what it is. I'm gonna click on continue, uh, and we'll see what happens here. So it says it's it's uh, configuring configuring my computer. Um, enter your Apple ID. Uh, and so this is the Apple ID. Yeah, so this is actually the same ID that I use with my iTunes uh, store purchases. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, pause the camera here for a second and I'll type in the info and then we'll be right back. Okay, uh, so I entered in my iTunes information. The screen after that was registration information. Again, pretty standard. Um, I'm not actually sure if I could have skipped the registration. A lot of people don't like doing it, but I figured I might as well, you know, kind of do it. Uh, and it says, you know, uh, a couple more questions. What do I do? Uh, I run a home business. What describes what you do? We'll see if they have what it is I do. Nah, yeah, I'll just leave it as other. I'm going to click on continue. All right, so it's going to ask me to create the account. So account name. Uh, oh, that's really weird. So that's kind of lame. Uh, I'm just zooming in here so you can kind of see this here. It's uh, so it's asking my name, and then the account name is iTunes. Um, my iTunes email address is is iTunes at jasondunn.com. Okay, there we go. The secret is out. And so it's saying that this will be used as the name for your home folder and can't be changed. Uh, that's kind of ridiculous. I don't want my home folder to be called iTunes. That's, that's totally stupid. Um, but, well, anyway, uh, apparently it can't be changed. So um, I guess I'll just kind of leave it. Although... I wonder if it's, oh, okay, there we go. Well, that's kind of stupid on Apple's part. They mean that it can't be changed after this step. So as in, if I want to change it, here is the one and only place that I would actually change it. So that's kind of weird. So I'm just going to, I guess, have the folder name, uh, the account name be, be Jason Dunn. Uh, I'm not going to go with any kind of a password hint. Oh, uh, oh, no, no, no. I don't want to, well, wait a second. I guess maybe. All right, so it is uh, creating the account right now. Uh, it says it's connecting to Apple. It says it's talking with Apple, connecting to Apple, talking with Apple. Boy, there's all this connection and talking. Uh, now it's prompting me for a, a mobile me account. Um, so uh, yeah, so basically it, it's seeing if I already have one. Uh, I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna say I don't want to try it right now because I haven't heard great things about Mobile Me and it's $109 a year, which is a little bit pricey. So I'm just gonna kind of skip that. Um, it's asking me for the time zone. Uh, it it already has me in the closest city, but I guess I'll automatically I'll just uh, set it. Oh, that's cool. So there's a checkbox that says set time zone automatically during during current location. And then it actually uh, zooms, it it, go, it finds your current location. So I'm actually in Calgary. So I totally dig that. Uh, I have been harping on, you know, um, Windows OEMs for a little while now. Whenever I see anything that involves location and it's a Wi-Fi connected device, if it doesn't automatically sniff out my location, then it's stupid. I mean, that is that is a poor, poor use of, of technology. So Apple did a good job here. That's That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so it says that my Mac is set up and ready. 
Uh, and then it says I can back up the computer, browse other files, email style, chat using effects, organize your work. Uh, okay. Uh, it says enjoy using your Apple computer and Mac OS X. So I click OK. Staring at a blue screen. All right. Staring at a purple screen. Let me just zoom out here a little bit. As you can see, um, there's the Mac desktop. Uh, boom. That's it. So I'm, I'm into OS X. Um, I guess I'll just sort of describe the, the setup experience. Um, there were more steps, I think, than on a typical Windows computer, like with the registration and putting in your iTunes account and stuff like that. Uh, so there were a few more steps, but the process felt very kind of smooth to me. It felt sort of, uh, it didn't feel intrusive. Um, it didn't feel like the Mac was struggling to keep up with it. I've seen Windows computers, uh, especially HP laptops, where the initial setup it is sluggish and it kind of drags and you're looking at these choppy animations and it just seems like the computer wasn't really designed to keep up with with the setup process um i quite like the fact that that was all you know just very straightforward it was really smooth there was no weird glitches um i gotta say i really like the fact that i'm staring at my desktop here there's no weird pop-ups there's no uh, warnings, your antivirus software is out of date. There's no, um, you know, cheesy icons on the desktop for some crapware, you know, for trialware of this, trialware of that. There's no, you know, eBay icon. Um, this is a really, you know, I boot this up and my, my immediate feeling is, oh, you know, this is my, this is my new computer. You know, this is a new computer for me. Uh, I don't feel like I'm being subjected to the whims of, an OEM that's trying to save a couple bucks by bundling a bunch of stuff with it. So, yeah, so I'm I'm, I'm digging that. I mean, that that's kind of my, my first impression uh, of what I'm seeing here. Um, what's kind of funny is that I've never used OS uh, 10, Mac OS 10. <laughs> I almost said OS X. So, uh, as I'm sort of looking at this here, my first my first question is sort of like, oh well what do I do? You know, um, it, it's kind of interesting, right? Like it might've almost been neat, uh, if when, um, the machine was booting up, if it asked you, you know, what kind of a Mac user you were, if this was your first computer, uh, because I would have frankly enjoyed maybe seeing a brief tutorial or, you know, some sort of orientation, uh, for using, uh, Mac OS 10. Uh, right now I'm just sort of staring at a, at a blank desktop. And, you know, if I'm a new user, my first thought is, Oh, well, what do I do now? And again, never having used uh, a Mac, never having owned a Mac and never really having used a Mac for more than like maybe a couple of hours total in the past, you know, a couple of years. Um, I don't entirely know what I should do first. So obviously I have all my icons down here. You know, I got iTunes, I got, you know, uh, iPhoto, um, all this other stuff. Um, I guess the fact that iPhoto and iMovie are installed and so is GarageBand uh, means that the, uh, I don't need to worry about the install CDs because uh, DVDs because evidently um, iLife is already installed. So yeah, there you go. That's kind of my, just my very first impressions. Again, some people may think this is stupid. Some people may find it interesting. As I mentioned, you know, earlier, I'm a hardcore Windows guy, never had a Mac before. This is a completely new experience for me. Um, and I, I think it's been cool. Like it's, it's been really neat for me to kind of evaluate and see, you know, what the out of box setup experience is, uh, on, on a new Mac. And I have to say, um, I'm impressed. I mean, there's there's a lot of things about this that I thought were were pretty cool. Um, before I booted up the Mac, of course, I did the uh, the RAM upgrade, and so I'll just point out that uh, it, it's saying it has four gigs of RAM, so that's cool. So that means the uh, RAM from Kingston is working. Uh, it's working. <laughs> the machine booted up, so you know it works. So yeah. All right. So uh, yeah, this has been Jason Dunn from uh, Apple Thoughts. I hope you've enjoyed this kind of thought experiment um, in terms of just, you know, what it's like for a Windows guy to uh, use a Mac. Um, it's weird here. I'm, I'm hovering on this window and the, the, the X is in the upper left. So that's kind of mind blowing. Got to wrap my brain around that. So yeah, so that's it for right now. Um, I'll be shooting, you know, uh, adding on to this video as I go uh, and kind of sharing some general experiences about using it. But overall, uh, in terms of out of box experience, in terms of overall sort of impressions of setting up the product and hitting the power button and, and watching it work. Um, 
this Apple really hit it out of the park. I mean, other than a couple of really minor glitches, this has been a very smooth, very uh, kind of rewarding experience that's, I gotta say, uh, dramatically different from a lot of Windows PCs. Uh, there are there are some that are that are pretty good, um, but this is you know this is cool. This is nice. This was sort of like a I don't know almost like a relaxing setup experience as opposed to some of the setup experiences I've seen in uh, in some Windows PCs. So yeah, so we'll see we'll see what I think of uh, Mac OS 10. We'll, we'll see what I think of the iMac. But this has been sort of. Uh, like I said, an experiment. Jason Dunn from Apple Thoughts. Please rate the video, comment, and uh, subscribe to our channel. Thanks a lot for watching.